Welcome to Pography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, we are going back to the basics and we'll learn about how light interacts with a globe or round surface. We will begin with three examples of different light scenarios on a globe. Then we will use the information and the shading techniques we learned from the globes and apply them to the grapes artwork. Lastly, I will explain how I applied color to the pyography artwork. Now this tutorial was requested by Sylvia, one of my website subscribers, and she subscribed, she asked for it a few months back, so thank you Sylvia. Now during the tutorial there will be terms I use like circular motion and pull away strokes. If you are unfamiliar with my terminology, in the comments below, I will put a link to a tutorial that explains them. So let's get to work. Our first example has a single source of light on it. This results in the light being bright on the front of the globe where the light is striking, but the opposite or back side of the globe is in shadows. Where the light strikes or the point of impact is the brightest spot on the globe. Lastly, there is a transition line where the light fades and the shadows begin. Begin by drawing a circle using a stencil, compass, or method of your choice, and then burn in the line using a writer pen tip. To help keep the circular shape, burn the circle in quarters. So burn one quarter of the circle, rotate the wood, burn the next quarter of the circle, rotate the wood, and so on until the circle is completely burned in. Use a shader to lightly burn in the transition line. Make sure to follow the curve of the circle. Do not burn a line straight down the length of the circle as this is not going to convey roundness. Darken up the back side of the circle. Make sure to keep your pen tip in optimal position when working next to the edge. And, if necessary, rotate the wood to make this easier to do. I am using pull away strokes for this step. So you start the stroke on the line and pull it towards the opposite edge on the circle. You can also use circular motion to reburn the area and darken it up. Just be careful when working near the edge as it is pretty easy to burn past the lines when using circular motion. Because it is so easy to accidentally burn past the lines when using circular motion, I prefer to create a buffer zone first. To create a buffer zone, you burn along the edge of the circle using a shader and then extend the color with pull away strokes or the burn of your choice. With the buffer zone in place, I can then use circular motion without having to get too close to the edge of the circle. Rotate the board back if you had turned it and then finish filling the left side of the circle with gradient color. I am using a combination of circular motion and uniform strokes for this process. I use uniform strokes to fill in the area with a base color, which is a general tan color. Then I use circular motion to darken the area and create the gradient color. Also, I use circular motion along the transition line as it softens the edges, so I think this helps with the gradient shading. Now, do you have to use the same burn methods that I am? No. Use what method works best for you. Now fill the front half of the circle with gradient color that is in the tan hue range. Make sure to leave the point of impact the brightest spot on the circle. The color should get gradually darker the further from that point you get. I predominantly use circular motion on the front of the circle. Our second globe example has reflected light along the back of it. 
Notice how much brighter the direct light side is, which is marked by the white arrow, compared to the reflected light side, which is marked with a yellow arrow. Now let's talk about the angle of the light. The light strikes on the upper right quadrant, so the reflected light is brightest on the lower left quadrant. This means we have two points of impact, direct light, which is the brightest spot on the globe, and reflected light, which is softer and less intense. Now look at the shadowed area on the globe. The shadow is a band that runs vertically down the length of the globe. Lastly, notice how the shadows narrow at the poles or the top and bottom of the globe. Begin by burning in the transition lines. Remember, there are two of them in this example. Then fill in the area between the two transition lines with gradient color. Again, I am using a combination of uniform strokes and circular motion for this process. I use uniform strokes to give the area a base color. Then I use circular motion along the transition lines to keep them soft and slightly diffused. And then I also use circular motion to darken the center and create the gradient color. Rotate the board, if needed, to burn along the back of the circle. The back needs to be filled with gradient color that gets lighter near the reflected point of impact. Did you notice how I tapped my pen tip on the dark area of the globe? before I resumed burning on the light area. Touching the pin tip to the dark burn removed any excess heat, and that made sure I didn't get a dark blotch when I started burning in the pillar area. Remember that information about the angle of light and the reflected point of impact? Well, guess who forgot about it? Oops. So I'm using a pencil to represent the angle of light, and I'm marking the points of impact on the board. Next, I'm using a fiberglass sanding pen to erase over the area where the point of impact should be. Note that you can use an ink pen eraser, and that will work just fine too. After I remove some of the color, then I reburned over the area to create gradient color around the reflected light point of impact. Make sure the reflected light side of the circle is darker than the direct light side. Now add gradient color to the front of the circle. Make sure to leave the direct light point of impact the brightest spot on the entire circle. I left mine unburned in this example. Our last globe example has reflected light all around it. The globe still has the two points of light impact, just like our previous globe example. The big difference is the shadowed area. Notice how it is located in the middle of the globe, and it doesn't extend to any edge on the globe. Begin this example by burning in the transition line. The transition line is circular in shape. Then fill that area with gradient color that gets darker at the center of this circular shape. If it helps, mark your points of light impact. Then fill the back half of the circle with gradient color. Leave the reflected light point of impact the brightest spot on this side of the circle. Make sure to burn in the top and the bottom of the circle. Fill the front half of the circle with gradient color, making sure that the direct light point of impact is the brightest spot on the entire circle. 
Again, I left mine unburned. Also, as you're working, make sure the side of the circle receiving direct light is brighter than the half that gets reflected light. Here's our reference photo for the grapes. Notice how the grapes are not all uniform in size or darkness level. Also notice how the light interacts on the grapes. There is a lot of reflected light bouncing around. With the first grape, examine the reference photo before you start burning and determine how the light is interacting on the grape. What globe example is the closest to matching the light on the grape? I see globe 3, as the grape appears to have light reflected all around it, and the center is dark. So fill the grape with a base color using uniform strokes, then reburn over it using circular motion to darken up the center. Now keep in mind that I am using the reference photo just to examine the light and the overall darkness level on the grape. I am not trying to replicate every minute detail on the grape. Instead, I am creating lots of little globes that have the same light characteristics as the grapes on the reference photo. I altered the leaves for this project, so the dark spot I'm burning doesn't appear in the reference photo. Use a writer pin tip to burn it to a dark brown color. Now we will work on the dark grapes in the back. Use a writer pin tip to burn along the edges of the grapes that are to the right of the stem. Then fill in the grapes till they are a dark brown color. Next, use the writer to edge the dark portion of the grapes to the left of the stem. Switch to a shader pin tip to fill the grapes with color. The bottom grape should be dark brown in color. The top grape is receiving a little light along the left side, so burn that left side to a medium brown color, and then let the color get darker the further from the edge you are. This grape is very dark in color, but for contrast purposes, we're going to treat it like a very dark version of globe example 1. This means that the bottom of the grape should be a couple shades lighter than the rest of it. Treat this grape as a globe 1 example type of grape, but the light is coming from the left side. Again, this is a dark grape, so the left side needs to be just pale enough to be seen. Examine the reference photo and determine which globe example the light on this grape is closest to matching. Which one did you pick? To me, it is closest to globe example 2. The lower right corner is where the direct light point of impact is, and the upper left corner or quadrant is where the reflected light is. Burn this grape to a uniform dark brown color. Rotate the wood, if needed, to keep the pin tip in optimal position when burning along the edges of the grape. This particular grape is another one that doesn't appear on the reference photo, so we're going to keep it simple and burn it to a dark brown color. This little grape up here is another one that does not appear on the reference photo, so burn it to a dark brown color. Leave the lower edge slightly paler just so you can see it. We can't see much of this grape, so burn it to a dark color with a slightly paler edge along the bottom of it. Burn this gap between the grapes to a very dark brown color. Examine the reference photo and decide which globe example best represents the light on this grape. Which globe example did you pick? I chose globe example 1. The left side is much paler than the right, so fill the grape with gradient color that gets lighter the closer to the left edge that you are. 
Burn the stem to a dark tan or light brown color. Then reburn to darken up the right side of the stem. Also darken up the bottom of each small little side stem. Again, examine the reference photo and decide which globe example the light matches for this grape. What is your pick? I chose globe example 1 as the color on the upper left side of the grape is paler than any other spot on the grape. Remember to rotate the wood if needed when working along the bottom edge so you keep the pin tip in optimal position. Finish giving the grape gradient color that is dark along the lower right quadrant and gets paler at the upper left quadrant. Once again, examine the reference photo and pick the light example that best mimics the grape. Now you might find it helpful to mark the point of light impact like I did using a stickum. This is another grape that needs to be examined and which globe do you think it matches? I see globe 3. I do want to mention again that I am using uniform strokes to give the grape a base color. Then I use circular motion to darken it up and create the gradient shading as needed. Repeat the routine of examining the reference photo and then making a determination of how to treat the light. To me, this grape is a classic Globe 1 example. It has light that hits it only from one side. Burn this little grape to a dark brown color. Examine the grape on the reference photo and decide both its darkness level and light situation. What example do you think it matches for the light? I picked Globe 3 for this grape. Now this grape is a little unique because of the reflected spot near the center of the grape. Burn a transition line around that reflection and then color in the rest of the grape. Burn over the reflection spot to blend the edges. You should know the drill by now. Look at the reference photo and pick which globe example the light mimics. I chose globe example 3 as the light is reflected all around the grape, except one small spot. Along the upper right corner or quadrant, there is a spot where it is touching the adjacent grape. Because of this, that spot isn't receiving reflected light. With the remaining grapes, you need to do what we've been doing all along. Examine the reference photo, pick a light example that it matches, and then color the grape according to the rules for that example. Begin by burning a dark line along the right edge of one rope segment. Then burn short pull away strokes along that dark line. Start the stroke on the line and pull it towards the opposite side of the rope segment. Stop the stroke just before reaching the next rope segment. It will take a number of pull away strokes before the segment is filled in. 
do these same steps on each one of the next rope segments. Burn each segment individually. Yes, there are a lot of rope segments. It didn't seem like a lot when I drew in the design, but I quickly changed my mind when I started burning the rope. As you work your way around the rope, it can be helpful to rotate the wood. Some directions are much easier to burn pull-away strokes than they are in other directions, so experiment around and find what works best for you. Now remember, start each segment by burning a dark line along the right side of the rope segment, then fill the segment with pull-away strokes. Start each stroke on the dark line and pull it towards the opposite side of the segment. Stop just before reaching the next segment. Doing this will help each segment look rounded. Use a shader pin tip to burn gently curving lines along the vein. Start the line on the vein and pull it in a soft arch or gentle curve towards the outer edge of the leaf. Vary the color and the length of the curving lines. When working near two corners where two veins meet, start the stroke on the corner and pull it straight out from the corner. Don't curve the line. Also, when working near an area where two veins meet, shorten the length of the lines accordingly. Continue to work your way around the leaf, burning gently curving lines that start on the vein and get pulled towards the outer edge of the leaf. Vary the length and darkness level of those lines. If needed, rotate the wood as you work to make the process of burning the lines as comfortable as possible. Now use the shader pen tip to burn short dark lines along the outer edge of the leaf. Don't burn the lines too long, but do vary it by a little bit how long each line is. As you can see, you can burn in the dark border around the leaf before burning the lines along the vein. Heck, you can even burn in sections of the leaf at a time. Burn the border and burn along the veins, then move to the next section of the leaf and repeat. What I'm trying to convey is that the order you do the steps does not matter because once all of the steps are done, you're going to end up with the same great results. After the dark border is done, then burn the gently curving lines along the veins. Start each line on a vein and pull it towards the outer edge of the leaf. Again, make sure to vary the color and the length of the lines. This leaf is pretty small, so most of the lines are going to be fairly short. Reburn a little section of the veins at the point where they all meet. I like the dark spot so much that I added it to the second leaf. With this leaf, burn the gently curving lines along the veins. Also, darken up the starting point of each vein as you work. Now remember to start each gently curving line on a vein and pull it in a gentle curve or arch towards the outer edge of the leaf. Vary the length and the darkness level of the gently curving lines. When working near areas where the veins meet, shorten your line length accordingly. I mentioned before that it might be easier to rotate the wood as you work. This can change the direction you have to move your hand when burning the lines and it can make it easier. We are all different in how we hold the pen, so experiment and find out what works best for you. After the lines along the veins are burned in, then burn the short dark lines along the outer edge of the leaf 
creating a dark border. When burning on the border near the dark grapes, reduce the darkness level of your border so it can be seen against those dark grapes. Repeat the same steps on the next leaf. I chose to burn the gently curving lines along the veins first, but that doesn't mean that you have to. Really, it is up to you what order you want to do the steps in. After you burn the lines along the veins, then burn the dark border along the edge of the leaf. With the last leaf, again burn the gently curving lines along the veins. Like before, start each line on the vein and pull it in a gentle curve or soft arch towards the outer edge of the leaf. Vary the length and the color of those curving lines. Most of this leaf is next to dark grapes. So burn the border on this leaf to a brown color instead of dark brown. You want it light enough that it can be seen against the darker grapes that are behind it. I thought the rope needed more definition and contrast against the leaves, so I used a writer pen tip to burn a dark line around the edges of each rope segment. Use the shader of your choice to burn wide lines of tan down the board. It is okay to leave little gaps. Also, as you can see, I am burning in both directions. On the way down, I use one side of the shader, and on the return trip back up the board, I'm using the other side of the shader. This produces more varied lines as the downstrokes are being pulled towards me and the upstrokes are being pushed away. If you get too many gaps, fill them in with more lines. I kept my lines in the tan color range with a few that might be in the light brown. Use the razor edge of the shader to burn in thin dark lines randomly on the board. Make sure to vary how long the lines are and where they start and end. Also add a few thicker dark lines here and there. Rotate the board and use the shader to fill the bottom of the board with tan colored lines and then add some thin dark lines. Also burn in a fewer thick dark lines. Overall, you want the bottom of the board to look like the top of the board. With the background done, I didn't think the rope stood out very well. It needed more contrast. So I added a dark shadow along the outer edge of the rope. Before you add color to your original artwork, I highly recommend taking a picture of the art and printing out the photo. Then test out the colors and combination of colors on the printout. In this video right now, I am coloring on a printout of the artwork. It took me several rounds of testing out different colors and combinations of colors before I found something that I liked. Now I'm working on the actual artwork, and I started with it the dark purple on the grapes. I colored over the dark grapes too. I did not apply a heavy layer of color as I prefer a more subtle or hint of color on my biography. But this is my personal choice. If you like more color, then please add more color. Make it yours. This is your artwork. After applying the color, then rub a clean blending stump over the color to smooth and blend it. If you're burning on plywood like I am, this will help push the color down into the grooves or slivers of missing wood on the plywood. This picture shows the impact blending has on the color. Before, the color wasn't that noticeable, but after blending, you can really see the color. In fact, after blending, I thought the color was a little too bold for my taste, 
so I'm using a kneadable eraser to remove some of it. Any pencil eraser will work for this. Something that I learned from Wren Shell is see where else you can use the color. I think that this helps tie the art together. So while I was using the dark purple, I went ahead and used it on the veins of the leaves. I thought it looked wonderful. Afterwards, I blended out the color using the blending stump. Along the edges of the leaves, I used Light Cadmium Red by Soho. Before using the blending stump on a new color, clean it. Just rub it on a piece of sandpaper until traces of the color are gone. Next, I added yellow to the pell areas on the leaves. To me, the pell areas are the spots that don't have a lot of burning on them. And of course, I blended it with a clean blending stump when I was done. Looking at the leaf, I thought the red along the edges wasn't dark enough even after blending. So, I'm adding more color. And then once I'm done, I will blend it again. I also added more yellow as it too needed a touch more color. Lastly, I went around the edges of the leaves with a dark cadmium orange color. I blended that color out and I was done with the artwork. That's it, we are all done. Sylvia, I hope this helps and thank you for your suggestion. If there was something that you would like to see, then please leave a comment and let me know. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.